Hi, welcome to today's video. What I'm going to do today is start something a little bit different. Um, plenty of people have asked us in the comments if I will do a series on different card softwares. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to start drawing in CAD. Now, everybody wants to jump into 3D CAD and model the USS Enterprise, because it's awesome. Um, but you can't do that straight away. You need to learn the basics first. So, I've been doing CAD for 20 plus years, and the way I learned it was to do 2D CAD first, and then use what you've learned from that in a 3D CAD environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a piece of software called DraftSite, it's very similar to AutoCAD. There's a, a free version of it available. I'll put a link in the description to the uh, the draft site download page, and you can go in, get it, and register a free copy. And um, you can follow along with what I'm doing. I'm going to break this up into quite small chunks because it is quite a lot to take in. So there'll probably be quite a few short videos going up in quite a, a short amount of time, but that's probably the best way to do it. So, without further ado, let's jump to the draft site window. Now, here we are in the draft site window, and there's a couple of things I need to explain first of all. Uh, along the top of the window is something called the ribbon bar. Uh, it's a Microsoft invention, I believe. But, um, yeah, it's, it's got all the basic commands in. And we're only going to be interested in this home tab right now. We're not interested in any of the others. And to be perfectly honest, we're only interested in this first one called draw. That's what we're going to cover today. Now, down the left-hand side is the properties bar. If you don't have the properties bar activated um, in a different video, I'll show you how to activate that. It's not a really big deal that you don't have it activated right now, but um, I always like to leave it open just because. And along the bottom of the screen along here is the uh, the command window. Now, this is vitally important, the command window. You can um, resize it somehow, but uh, I like to try and leave it like three or four lines available so that you can actually see what the software is trying to tell you. If the software doesn't do what you think it's going to do, it'll be telling you something in the command window, so you really need to have that kind of like available. But um, that's it. That is the interface. This black bit is the bit that we're going to draw on. Um, always draw on a black screen. Please never ever draw on a white screen, because um, years ago my optician warned me about drawing on a white screen because I was staring at it every day, and it's bad news. So a black screen is much better. I know when you print it out, you print it on a white paper. Uh, we're not interested in printing things out. We're not interested in drawing things properly. We're just interested in getting some lines and some circles onto the actual screen. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to eventually we're going to we're going to draw this, which is a USB stick. It has a slot in. It has bits and pieces on the front of it. <coughs> I've already drawn that, and there'll be a link in the description for the image, not a card file, see, for the image with all the dimensions on, you need to draw it. But that's the end goal. First of all, we need to know how to draw. Now, the easiest way for me to explain this is to explain lines and circles. You've probably seen the matrix, and when Neo looks, you can see all the kind of like code going down. Well, I've been in CAD so long that when I look at things, I only see lines and circles. And that's all you need to know to draw things in card. There's a command up here on the left hand side called line. And there's a one called circle. And that's it. Everything else is just an adaptation of a line or a circle. So we're going to jump straight in with the line command. So just click the line command. And at the bottom left hand side of the screen, it'll say a specify start point. What does that mean? It means you click where you want the line to start. And as you drag it out, it'll be rubber banded to that point you just clicked. So you can click again for the next point and then click again for the next point. And you can draw whatever you want in lines. To finish the line, you press return and you'll notice, see this rubber banded bit? That will disappear because you didn't specify the end point of it. Now, there we go, we've got some kind of bizarre liney thing. And if you click on each segment of your line, you'll notice that they're all separate entities. To deselect anything, you just bash escape a few times. That's how you can always tell somebody who's worked in CAD for a long time, because their escape key is worn out on the keyboard. If anything happens on the screen that you don't want, you just bash escape lots of times, and it all resets. So, let's highlight one of these line segments. And you'll notice there's three blue squares on them. What are these blue squares about? 
Well, each line has a an end point, a midpoint, and an end point. And yes, you can snap to these points in the future. I'll show you how to set that up in a later video. But for now, if we click the midpoint and then click again, you'll notice we've just moved it. So it's a very simple way to move the line. And if you click an end point, you can reposition your line from either end. So midpoints and end points, you can edit the line with them. And that's it, that, that's the line command. The important thing here to notice is each individual section of the line is not joined together. Right, what I want to do now is I want to explain why when you just click in a random area in the screen and move to the left, you get a green box and when you move to the right, you get a blue box. Now this is a selection box and in other software you've probably seen group selection where you can like draw a, a box around things and select it all. Now the green and the blue is very, very significant. This line here is by itself, you can just click on it. Now down here we have three line segments right next to each other. If we want to select them all, we can just click the bottom corner and then start and move to this point. Now what this does is this is a crossing window. It's, a, it's got dashed lines in it and what it means is it will select anything that crosses the dashed lines. As you can see this line here and this line here cross the dashed line so they'll be selected. If we double bash escape. If we do it the other way and do a blue box this is a standard selection window and it only picks up entities that are completely within inside the window. These, This line and this line are now crossing the window, they're not completely inside of it, so you'll see they don't get selected. That's kind of important because you might be thinking, why can't I click these when you go that way and it works. So it's crossing selection and standard selection. Right, so that's lines and selections. We'll just recap. You click line, you click to start, and you click some points that you want to draw, and you press return to finish. That's lines. It's as simple as that. Okay. To delete anything, you just group select and press delete on the keyboard. It's that easy. Right, we're now going to draw circles. So a circle. We hit circle. Make sure we've hit circle. There we go. <laughs> And at the bottom left hand center corner of the screen it says specify center point. So you click where you want the middle of the circle to be. And as you drag it out you see the circle gets bigger. Now what it says now is specify radius. So we can click and there's a circle. Pretty straightforward. Now if we click circle again and then click a center point again. What we can do is we can specify the radius as 20 generic units. Because CAD works in generic units. They are units of whatever you want. They can be millimetres, inches, miles, light years, whatever you like. They're just numbers. So we're just going to use 20 generic units. And there we go. That, if we now click it and look at the properties, we can see the radius, which is this one with a little arrow, is 20. And the diameter, which is the one with the big arrow, is 40. But what if you wanted to draw a circle with a specific diameter? Easy. Click circle again. Click the centre point again. And then as you drag it out, you can see down here, it actually says options, diameter, and D has an underline under it. So if we press D and then return, what we're now doing, you can see now the line is twice as long. So we're now drawing the diameter. So if we, if we then used, again, 20 generic units, you notice that whole, that circle is half the size of this one. Because this one has a 20 radius, and this one has a 20 diameter. And that's it, that's circles. Circles are very simple. The control points on circles, we have a center point, as with the line, has a midpoint, and if you click it, you can move them around. And it has these four points, these are called quadrants. They are at the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock position. And if you click any one of them, you can resize your circle. Nice and easy. Right, so that's lines and circles. The only thing we need to cover now are different types of lines and circles. So let's talk about a polyline. Polyline is here, and we can drop it down, and we have a rectangle and polygon. But we're going to talk about polyline. Polyline, you click it, and it says specify start point. Okay, we start point, and then next point, next point, next point. Hang on a minute. This looks exactly like a line. Let, let's press return. Yeah, that, that's done nothing different, right? Wrong. 
If you now click the, the polyline, you'll notice that every single section of that line is highlighted. A polyline is one entity. Every single section is joined together. Now, polylines make it very easy to offset and trim and stuff later on, but we'll cover that in another video. The, the thing you need to know right now is line, every section is individual, and a polyline, every section is joined together. That's polylines. There are another couple types of polylines. We can have rectangle, which uh, you just click one corner and then click the other corner and it draws a rectangle. And as you can see, it's a polyline because all the sections are joined together. And we can also have a nice polygon. Now, polygons are a bit different. If you look, you click polygon, you click on the screen. It's not, it's not doing anything. There, that's because if you look down at the command window, it says specify number of sides. Okay. So we want six sides maybe now it says specify center point um it's still not doing anything all right it says do we want it to measure from the corner which is c o or from the side which is s now if we do c o for corner you can see now it's measuring from the center to one of the corners if we were to do that again polygon six sides center point and then s for side you'll now notice it's measuring to the middle of one of the sides that will all become apparent when you try and use polygons and it doesn't quite fit. You have to use the other one. But that's a polygon and as you can see when you click on them, they are polylines. You'll notice with a polygon as well, it doesn't have a center point. That's quite annoying. But, you know, you don't need to worry about it. And the relationship of the polygon when you edit it is gone. So if you move one of the sides, it doesn't change the size of the polygon. It's just a polyline. Now, finally today, what I'm going to talk to you about is arcs. And in particular, it's going to be the three-point arc. So we know that we can draw a circle from the center point and drag it out. What if we only wanted a little bit of the circle? Well, that's an arc. So if we just click arc and then say, okay, where do you want the start point to be? Um, you want the arc to pass through a point. So let's say pass through there and then, oh, look, it bends. And... It's, it's forming around the points that we click. So we can have just half a circle or a quarter circle. We can, we can even do something absolutely crazy and have almost a complete circle with a tiny gap in it. That's an arc. Now, if I click an arc, you'll notice it has a center point again, because it's a circle, and it has a midpoint, which you can change, and it has a start and an end point, which you can mess with. So you can fully edit your arcs just by dragging, clicking the points, moving and clicking again. It's that simple. Now, that's it. That's everything you need to know. So, let's draw something. But how can you draw something? We haven't got any dimensions. We haven't got any size. Doesn't matter. We can draw something. So let's draw a house with lines, okay? This is going to be the worst house you've ever seen. Um, I'm just going to draw as best I can. Uh, let's draw a door. Let's use rectangle for the door. There we go. Let's use a, um, um, a, another line. Now, if you want to move the screen around, just hold down the mouse button, the middle mouse button, the wheel. The wheel zoomies and the holding it down pans. So if you want to see the top, and then we just go line. Uh, yeah, we need a chimney pot here. Uh, turn. Uh, we need some windows. So let's put some. Uh, let's put some rectangles in. And then uh, we need to break the windows up because why not? Uh, line again. Uh, line again. And line one more time. And then I suppose we should. Uh, we should put some kind of stuff coming out of the uh, the old chimney pot here. Whoops, missed it. There we go. Yes, th this this the the heating system in this house it generates bubbles, right? Okay, so there you go. It's, it's completely um, friendly, and that's it. So there we go. With lines and circles, and what we've learned with rectangles and polylines, we can draw a house. I know it's rubbish. It's not about the the picture. It's about learning the CAD system. So, finally, um, what I want to teach you is, if you double-click the mouse wheel, it will fit everything that's on the screen into the screen. So, if we were to zoom right out and draw a circle right over here, 
and they'll double click the mouse wheel it fits everything on the screen so if you get lost in 3d in 2d space and you end up with this just double click the wheel and that's it there we go that brings the house back god it's an awful house right it needs a letterbox sorry sorry how, how are you supposed to get your mail if you don't have a letterbox there we go right so that's pretty much it for this video it's probably a little bit longer than i wanted it to be but that's lines and circles in the next video we're going to cover different editing techniques and how you can create more lines and more circles without actually drawing them so hopefully um hopefully this has been of interest to somebody and somebody will be interested to, to follow on this series um and for now that's pretty much it i've been steve thanks for listening